Hey, Aaron Rabinowitz here for the Pixellab.net. Unreal Engine is incredibly powerful when it comes to generating and rendering large-scale landscapes, but one of the big challenges of working with them is that with large landscapes, textures, no matter how big, will eventually tile. But in this free update to our Unreal Mutating Terrains, we've introduced two new tools that can save you from that issue. With just a few clicks, you'll be able to reduce and even entirely eliminate visual tiling. So let's take a look at that in action. I'm going to copy this material right here. Just choose copy here. I'm gonna go down to the bottom and I'm gonna rename it to ZZZ at the beginning. I just like to do that so it stays at the bottom of the list. And then with my landscape selected, I'm just gonna drag the material right onto the landscape. And you right now you can't even see the material because it's tiling so much. So what I'm going to do is jump into the material itself and I'm gonna Go to texture scaling, we'll set this to 0.1 and see what happens. Okay, as we do this, we can really start to see, first of all, a lot more detail, but also that it's tiling this way, which doesn't look great. And I'm gonna make it even smaller. Why don't we say 0 0.01, and that's definitely looking better. And if I were to come out really high, so let's just come up, let's say we go up here really high, you can see that in the distance, right? You can still see that tiling. All right, so what are we gonna do about that? Well, we've got a new thing that we've added called distance blending. And I'm gonna come down a little further into the material here and under distance blending, I'm gonna turn this on and instantly that's looking a lot better. So what's happening here? Well, I'm gonna turn on visualize distance and what this is doing is it's actually fading from red to green to blue, showing me the fades of three different areas and there's the colors in between where the fade is happening. So let me come down now a little bit lower. And what we're seeing is the closest pixels are red, the middle ground ones are green, and the ones in the furthest distance are dark blue, and the, these are the fades between them, the yellow and the teal. And we can use this to help us visualize the areas where we're having a fade. So basically what happens is we start at the certain size that we set at the beginning, and then as we fade into the green, there is a distance scaling. Here, let's bring this up just so we can see all the details. We can see that we multiply the scaling by a number. In this case, the first distance right here, the green is multiplied by 0.25. So it's a quarter of the size, or rather it scales up by four. So let's take a look at this uh, again. Let me turn off distance blending right here. Turn it on, turn it off, right? You can see that as we look further into the back, you know, and, and I'm gonna just make this even a little smaller, 0.1, and we can really see this tiling happening. And again, if I come back here and I turn on use distance blending, we can see that that really solves a lot of the problem. And we can control that distance, right? So visualize distance blend. What we can do is we can set the distance pixels. Maybe we want the red stuff. We want the stuff that's closest to, to be a little further down. Maybe we want the stuff in the back to be a little closer in. Maybe we wanna have more of a sharper transition between these two things. And I'll show you what that looks like. So if I turn off uh, visualize distance blend, and I really set the transition hardness up high. As I transition between these things, you can really see how that material is changing. So this is a great way to spread out the materials over an area of time where you have a scale that will correct for a lot of what happens when it starts to tile. But, you know, let's come back up a little bit here. And again, we can still see that there is a lot of tiling. And for that, here, let me just reset some of these features. And for that, we have another feature here, and that's called UV scrambling. I'm gonna turn on UV scrambling right here. And by doing this, we're actually creating a fractal mixing up of the texture. And we can see this by clicking on visualize UV scrambling. And right now it's not looking like it's really scrambled very much. It is, if we get really close, let's come down here we can see that the texture is being mixed uh, in different ways. And I just think that in this particular case, the scramblers need to be a bit bigger. So let me just turn off visualize UV scrambling for a moment. And I'm just going to change the scrambling from like one to something like 30. And down here, I'll set this other one to 40. And if we look around, we can see that, man, it's not, there is no tiling at all, pretty much. Like it looks really good. Like it looks completely randomized. And we can see that if we turn on visualize UV scrambling again, you can see that we're really mashing this texture up to make it look very random. And I'm gonna turn that off. And I'm just gonna float back up to the top here. 
And just so you can see that this looks really good. I cannot see any tiling here at all. And just so you see, it's a combination of the two features that we've added, because if I turn off use distance blending, you will start to see a repetitive pattern again. So by combining these two effects, we've created randomness that looks great both close up and in the distance. By the way, these tools also work with the mixer materials. So you can just go down into the settings here um, and turn on distance blending and also turn on the uh, UV scramblers and just change them to whatever they need to look like. And you can see we don't get any more tiling. So looking pretty good. As always, I hope that this helps you in your work. Once again, I'm Aaron Rabinowitz for thepixellab.net. I'll see you soon.